Hey, what's up? It's Chanel, and welcome to a new episode of Vital Vinyl Vlog. Today we have a little tiny collection update, but it's extremely important to me personally. You heard that church bell, and you know me. Yeah, we have the Devil's Lust from Wear Goat. Thank you, Liz, for keeping my Wear Goat collection up to date. Although now they have that new split with Eggs of Gamora, I think it is, which is insane sounding. I checked it out. Holy shit. I need to get that on cassette at least. But once again, in conspiracy with Iron Bonehead, Parasitic Records, where Goat have once again released Sonic perversity of the highest order with the devil's lust we get five original new tracks and a cover of impaled nazarene and that's goat perversion by impaled nazarene so that's a banger i love and i apologize here i never have asked anyone is it roke or rock for the art r-o-k is that roke or rock because he did the artwork and it's fucking fantastic as always and with wear goat you gotta come to expect sleaze like i mean right next to me is the last full length pestennial rights of infernal fornication i mean the wear goat's usually getting it on with every release I've done a whole wear goat collection. So I real quick though. Just because I have some in front of me. Like here's the live album. Molesting Mexico. That's not the wear goat though, but that's art from an actual serial killer. Forget his name. But Pestennial Rites of Infernal Fornication. Again, the Were Goat getting it on. Slave Bitch of the Black Ram Master. Again, while the Were Goat is doing something very dirty. And with. I'm not going over the splits or compilation. But, um. With um, Unholy Exultion of Full Moon Perversities, you just have this amazing putrid matte artwork. I fucking love this cover. But it's not as sleazy as all the others, but you still have a, you know, naked woman and the were goat lurking. But, like, this... I, I love the first were goat release but i'm really digging the devil's lust like this is already i like it a little bit more than pestennial rights like it just has a sicker sound to it like vocally like the vocals are really gnarly like really really gnarly i'm so stoked on how this sounds and i think it's a lot to do with the production also, recorded and mixed by fucking Charlie K, man. Toad House Studios. I wonder if he got rid of uh, Underworld Studios. I think that's what it was called. But it was mastered by uh, Pablo Clar Clares at DM6 Recording Studio. Like, seriously, I love how this record sounds like the tape sounds amazing i love how you know bestial black death sounds on tape but the vinyl 140 gram iron bonehead does not play i really need to get the split they just did with eggs but i was lucky enough and they still have copies of this somehow. The red 
first press of the devil's lust. Trust me, when this sells out, you're going to want to probably get a copy of one of these because they, they still have black available and they still have red available. I just think, you know, to me, wear goats on like the same level as like spectral voice and like blood incantation. I don't, I try not to miss their releases when it comes to a first press. And I try my damnedest to get a color. And I know that sounds lame, but like the only blood incantation first press I have that's not colored is uh, Time Wave Zero and uh, what's it called? Interdimensional Extinction. I have just plain black. But. This also comes with a massive poster. They have a big flag available also. But the cover art, this was going to go behind me. Probably going to swap that Last Days of Humanity poster. For wear goat. All my other wear goat posters, though, are on the ceiling due to their graphic nature. So maybe I should swap this with something. Maybe a Merciful Fate. One back there, like in the old days, or like a Morbose dad. Hmm. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna probably switch the backdrop over there by the um, decrepancy uh, flag. But um, I don't know whether to replace it with this wear goat poster, Devil Master poster, Interdimensional Extinction. I have a bunch of stuff I could replace it with, including, like, the, uh, Mortal Wound Gutless Split. Petrification. This is one of the biggest posters I fucking have. This thing is huge. Look at that thing. But that's been back there before, so I kind of just want to switch it up. And it's fucking wear goat. I mean, the only thing is, I'll just have to keep my nephew out of here because he doesn't need to, you know, see that. <laughs> but yeah, this, you know, if you're a fan of Bestial Black Death Metal, to me, wear goat is probably the best in America. And, you know, you can argue that all you want. There's a lot of gnarly war metal, Bestial Black Death bands. Caveman Cult, Antichrist Siege Machine, Horrorfragrium. Did I say Abysmal Lord? Like, yeah, Were Goat, you know, is something special in my opinion. Like, I just love this shit. And, like, you know, Tim Cole, Tim's the man. And, like, just, he's been in so many awesome bands. And, like, I just love everything Tim's done. For the underground in general and just, you know, keeping Parasitic just one of the best underground labels when it comes to filth. Because that's pretty much, you know, what Parasitic Records, that's their expertise, you know, it's filthy, evil fucking tunes. And I'm just absolutely loving The Devil's Lust. Weregoat has totally opened a new page with their songwriting. Like, it's definitely not as chaotic in a very good way. Like, it kind of sounds like, you know, you still get that, like, duh, 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 like that, you know, kind of like Ross Bay, like, duh, 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 like blasting. But, and still, like, the way that, like, Weregoat, like, they always have these really badass riffs like in between like drum fills and stuff and it's awesome but like it just feels a lot more like just not as chaotic more speedy and more death metal-y like it just sounds like more like evil death metal with like a bestial edge to it it's fucking gnarly <laughs> Thank you. 
same promo. So good. Like, seriously. I, I'm, like, really loving the new wear good. The Devil's Lust. But this is what you get. You know? I'll go over this one more time. I'll show you the cassette. Now I forgot to do that. But it comes on a nice red cassette through Parasitic Records. I do not know if Iron Bonehead has the cassette available or if they did their own pressing. I honestly have no idea, but go support Tim and grab this from Parasitic Records or the Wear Goat Bandcamp. Links will be in the video description. But, like, at first I was going to call this an EP, but, like, due to the song length and everything, I mean, like, there is one cover on here. I would say this is a really badass mini LP. I mean, like, because when you look at Pestennial Rights, like, this is a certified full-length record. Like, it has, I forget how many, I'm, I mean, I'm looking right at it, but, uh. Off the top of my head, I forget how many tracks there are. Uh, Alright, so one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have six songs on the first side of the last record. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven tracks total on Pestennial Rights. I love the extra artwork. And the, the extra promo photo. I always thought that was so cool on the Vault of Dry Bones and Parasitic, along with Iron Bonehead, cassette version of Pestennial Rights of Infernal Fornication. I liked how it had, you know, alternative photos, extra photos and shit like that. I thought that was really cool. I'm just happy to have this in my hand right now. Again, cosmetically, everything is gorgeous, in my opinion. You can't go wrong with the whole black and red when it comes to Bestial Black Death. And I like how Wear Goat added just enough color that it's not black, white, and red. Like, you know, so many other bands that just... You know, want to be either Blasphemy or Conqueror. You know, trust me, there's nothing wrong. Those colors, they work extremely well. Like, here's a great example. Like, on Perifragria on Beast of the Temple of Satan. And, like, even with Abysmal Lord only sticking to, like, red. Like, that turned out badass. And yeah, like, this stuff is within arm's reach because it gets listened to a lot. Like, especially, like, my wear goat tape. Like, but this is going to be getting played a lot. This is going to knock Fiendish Imp off of the turntable for a few days. I'm sorry, Fiendish Imp, but you'll be back on there. Uh, Halloween will be here soon, but the thing also I like about the vinyl version is you get more of the cover art which is even more sleaze as you get a nice skeletal dong in your face <laughs> but uh and like this dude back here is crucified on an upside down cross like fuck yeah yeah you can't really see him on the cassette he's back there lurking but you know that's one of the things about the vinyl version you get all this extra like just artwork on the cover badass because i the cover art's great like iron bonehead does not play when it comes to their vinyl packaging as i'm sure most of you know and the devil's lust by wear goat is no you know no different because here's some more artwork this time not available with the cassette and that is gonna be a badass t-shirt trust me look at that you can already see look 
going to be fucking sick. Like, if you put, like, where goat, where Cryptopsy is, and then, like, put that design on the back, fucking A, you know? Like, I, I would eat that up. But here's the uh, insert. You get the lyrics. And the lyrics, the lyrics really are great. Perverse warriors of the Devil's Cross, we shall drag this world with us into... Flame. So, dude, festering womb of un uncreation. Whoa. Impious new millennial. Exalted satanic age. I fucking love Weregoat. How can you not love this stuff? And here is the 140 gram red vinyl variant. Again, I highly suggest getting this. It's the same price as the black. Unless, you know, you you just want to stick the black vinyl. This is not a pre-order or anything like that. This is already in the band's hands. I got my copy extremely fast. And, again, I have to thank Liz and Tim. like, And just the USPS, actually, for... You know, doing their job really good. Because <laughs> this got from Seattle to my house in like three days, I think. Like, it was extremely, extremely fast. And as with most Iron Bonehead releases, you also get a poster of the cover art. And I know this is kind of gnarly. You might not want to hang this up if you have kids, younger relatives, etc. It's all gravy, you know? You gotta do what you gotta do. It's your house, though. It's your rules. But, you know, I'm not sure if everybody wants, like, a framed woman getting it by, uh, you know, skeletal demon of sorts <laughs> hanging on their wall. But I know I want this on my wall, and it's gonna be up there, and it's gonna be fucking cool. Because, like I said, I fucking love Weregoat. I'm a sucker for this shit. I just love it. But, like, when it just comes to Weregoat sound, I feel like they just have everything I personally want out of extreme metal in 2022. Like, really, they honestly, like, when it comes to my personal tastes, and stuff like musically they really do like just kind of tickle my fancy as corny as that sounds it's like just one of those bands like blasphematory like it's kind of everything i want from a death metal band like blasphematory has like don't get me wrong like i love you know just the whole blood incantation vibe but like still you know like I also love something as simple as mortician. And it is what it is. That's why I always tell people, you have to be open-minded sometimes. Like, I, I love Brian Eno. Like, I don't care what other people think. Like, I love ambient music, so of course I love Brian Eno. But, like, I'm a massive Neurosis fan, and I keep putting this off. I have to get this review done. I just need to remind myself right now. I have to get this the epitaph review done for Gurgling Gore. Keep fucking forgetting I haven't done it yet. But that's because I've been getting releases like the new Weregoat, the Devil's Lust coming in. And it's just been very amazing. Like, been getting some really gnarly music on the channel lately, and it's 98% thanks to Elizabeth. So, give her a round of applause for being an awesome human being, seriously. But, as always, thank you Maniacs for watching, especially if you made it 20 minutes into this madness. You're a fucking psycho, and I love you. But my favorite track on here, at the moment, because, I, I, you know, 
I did just get this. Like, so at the moment, like after a couple playthroughs, my favorite track would probably be Festering Womb of Uncreation or Merciless Execution. They're both pretty gnarly. But this whole album, mini album, whatever they're calling the Devil's Lust, I would call it Essential 2022 Listening. If you're a fan of Best Deal Black Death Metal, especially if you're new to the genre, this is a great way to get your toes wet. This and like Antichrist Siege Machine, which might be even be a little bit too gnarly. Where go, you know, again, the, the artwork is extremely gnarly, but don't let that deter you. Do not judge a book by its cover here with Where Goes. I know some people just, just be like, Oh, it's just misogynistic nonsense. Like, no, like it's obvious. Like no, you just like no. <laughs> just listen to Wear Goat, and yeah, that's all I need to say. Listen to Wear Goat. They have a new split out. I didn't even know about it till today, so I'm like, ah, fuck. Is a new wear goat split? Like, god damn it. But, yeah. As always, thanks for watching. You fucking rule. Thank you again, Liz. You fucking rule also. And everybody watching, as always, make sure your notifications are on. Because I know the YouTube algorithm has been all fucking wacky and shit this whole summer. So, yeah, just make sure, you know, you are subscribed and all that nonsense. I'm not going to tell you, click, click down there. <laughs> but yeah, you know, kiss the goat, motherfucker. Hails. <laughs>